What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released iOS 16 beta 2 to registered developers a little over two weeks after the first beta. Now, in addition to this iOS release, Apple also released the second beta for iPad OS 16, Watch OS 9, Mac OS 13 Ventura, TV OS 16, and HomePod OS 16. But this video is all about iOS and iPad OS. So let's go ahead and start off with the size of this update. And you can see here it came in at 1.83 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. That is the size coming from beta 1. Of course, if you were on iOS 15, that size will be larger. So if you go ahead and check out the build number if we go to our settings let's go into general about 16.0 we can see here the new build number is 20A5303I so we have an I at the end of the build number which indicates we do have quite a few betas to go as expected with a new major release now if we go down to the modem firmware we can see that has also been updated it's now 2.06.01 on the iPhone 13 series. All right, so now let's talk about the fun stuff. What is new here in iOS 16 beta two? And we have a lot of changes. So we're gonna start off with the lock screen. The first thing you'll see once you update to beta two. So once you go to here, if you have to press on your lock screen, of course, to go to the customization screen right here, you will notice that we have quite a few changes here. So first off, let's just start with customize. If you go into customize here, you will see you have two new photo filter options. So before it was just natural and black and white, but now you have duotone and color wash. So two new filters to put on your wallpapers to give them a different look. And you can see this is beta one on the left, beta two on the right. So we only have black and white right there. Now also when you tap on these three dots, you can see that there is a verbiage change. So before it would say disable and enable the perspective zoom and the depth effect, but now it just simply says perspective zoom and depth effects also with some new glyph icons added right there. And then we do also have style color. That is a new option there when you tap on those three dots. When you go to that, you could change the style color. We do also have some widget changes as well. So you can see right there, we have the clock alarm. So before on iOS 16 beta one, it showed that really tiny little alarm icon right there. But now here in beta two, it shows a much larger icon for your timers being off, your alarms being off. It also says alarms off up top now, whereas before it would just say no alarms. Now, when you go to create a new wallpaper, you can see here that the order has changed of the selections here. So we have our suggested photos, our photo shuffle, and you can see weather and astronomy, which by the way, weather and astronomy has been added for older devices like the iPhone XS and XR. That's why it's not showing up over here on beta one, but the order has changed. And we also have the photo shuffle added right there as well. And then when you actually add a new wallpaper, you will see once we tap on done right here, we didn't get an option with beta one, but with beta 2 we have this brand new option here that says set as wallpaper pair so this basically makes it more clear that you know if you want to set the same wallpaper for your home screen or if you want to customize the home screen and have a different wallpaper on the home screen than what's on the lock screen so a lot of people got confused by this this will help clear things up for sure so if you go to customize home screen you can see it takes you to this page right here where you can set a new wallpaper for your home screen than what's on your lock screen now i did also want to mention that the astronomy wallpapers have been fixed here so there was a bug in beta one where the earth and the moon would be really really like blurry like the image would just not be good quality but now in beta 2 that has been resolved you can see here it's a perfectly clear image there's not any blur there anymore we do also have this green dot to indicate where we are currently located which i think is pretty cool could be a breach of privacy if you don't want people knowing that but most people aren't sharing their phone on the internet like i am now if we head into the settings and go to our wallpaper section you can see there is quite a difference here so first off it just says wallpapers up top now whereas before it said wallpapers and lock screens it also now says current right above these two. We have the two customized buttons. And we also have a new little plus glyph icon there next to add new wallpaper. And when you tap on one of these now, so for instance, if we wanted to go to the lock screen, you could see it did that. But now on beta two, it gives us the option to customize a current wallpaper or add a new wallpaper instead of just straight taking us right here, which I like a lot better. I think this is gonna be a lot less confusing for people when they first update to iOS 16, especially because it is, like I said, pretty confusing. So I like this new option here. Now you may have already noticed this, but the now playing platter is slightly bigger in beta two. So this is technically the live activities platter, but it is slightly larger here in beta two. In the photos application, we have a new animation when selecting a subject 
when trying to remove it from the background. So the new feature in iOS 16, of course, is when you select a subject, you can basically pull it from the background and make a transparent image out of it, which is really cool. But there's no animation when you do it until beta two. Now we have a new animation when selecting that subject. So if I go ahead and press on it, you can see there's a slight animation there. I kind of stopped it <laughs> in the middle of the animation, but if you select it, you can see right here, it will do it again. If I select, you can see it kind of goes through it and then you move it. So little new animation. And I also noticed that this feature is a little bit more precise in beta two than it was in beta one. Beta one would catch a lot of the background and have like white around it. But in beta two, this feature is a little bit more refined. In the messages application, you can now filter by SIM card. So if you have a eSIM and a physical SIM and you only wanted to see the messages from one of those SIM cards, you now have that option right here. You can also now report SMS messages as junk. So before in iOS 15 and iOS iOS 16 beta one, you could only report iMessages and that would just go to Apple, but now you can report SMS messages as well. And that will of course report it to Apple and your carrier. And then for Indian users, messages now supports event extraction from SMS. In the wallet application, we have some new features as well. So right here under monthly activity, you can see in this section, it will show how much daily cash you accumulated in that period of time. So mine is selected by monthly and it now shows plus 872 in daily cash. Also, now when you tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner, you get some new options here. So this is a whole new menu where you can manage your daily cash, which is also new. It shows right here your lifetime earnings and it shows this month and this year. So it breaks it down by the month and the year that you've accumulated. Also, you can see you get the option to view card details and remove card. Before, when you tapped on those three dots, it would only show you your card details. We have some changes in the weather application. So number one, the weather appears to be showing differently on beta two than it was in beta one. So I have the exact same selection, the same city selected, and you can see quite a discrepancy, especially in the low temperature of the day. There is a four degree difference, so I'm not sure what that's about. But if we go into the map right here, so if we go to our map, you can see that when we tap on the little layer platter right there, we now have precipitation up top instead of temperature. So the order has been changed slightly to show precipitation up top. In the podcast application, we have a couple of minor changes here in beta two. So when you tap on the playback speed over here on the bottom left, you will see that the order has been changed. So it used to show the slowest up top and the fastest down at the bottom that has been reversed. Now it shows the fastest up top. Also, when we tap on the sleep menu over here on the right hand side, the same thing has been done here. So before it would show the shortest up top, the longest at the bottom. Now it shows the shortest at the bottom, the longest up top. Heading back into settings, if we go to our focus modes right here, first off, you will see that for focus status, it now shows when it's on right here without having to go into it to see that it's turned on. We also now have the option to choose our Apple Watch screen for this focus mode, and it actually works when you tap on choose. Before, it would just not work. And when you go to focus filters, you can see that dark mode and low power mode have been swip swapped. They're just on opposite sides now. Also, the haptic feedback when typing it seems to be a little bit stronger here in beta 2. The haptic engine seems to be revved up a little bit more and I think it might be a bug because it seems a little too strong for me but we'll see. Apple does also mention that you can now back up your device via LTE or 5G however I'm not seeing that option right here it only says Wi-Fi it could be because I don't have a SIM card in but Apple did say that this is now an option to back up via iCloud over LTE or 5G. Now as far as bugs go we do have a few bugs on beta 2 that I've noticed within the first couple of hours of using this so if you go to add a new wallpaper you will see that you now have placeholder text up here when you want to go to your photo gallery it just shows photos wallpaper description so apple forgot to change the placeholder text there and then also down at the very end there's also some more placeholder text right there that says the same thing also some people are saying that they're now playing platter is just simply not showing up on the lock screen so when you play music and go back to your lock screen some people are reporting that this is no longer showing up on their lock screen i've also seen a lot of people say that their music widget would just completely disappear here in beta 2. now neither one have happened to me but i have been seeing people report on those already with beta two. And then also I should mention this. So if I go ahead and set my wallpaper pair as this light colored wallpaper and then go back to my home screen, you will see that actually now it has been fixed. So sometimes these icons will show a very ugly drop shadow behind them and it will stay white text. But now it looks like that might've been fixed here with beta two because now it shows black text under the icons, just like it did 
in iOS 15, but sometimes you will see a little drop shadow there and looks really bad, but this might confirm that it is a bug. And if you take a look at the release notes, you can see there are quite a few bugs in here as well, quite a few known issues, and there are a lot of workarounds in here as well. So if you wanted to dig through these, you can, but a lot of these are pretty specific and you're probably not gonna run into most of them, but there are quite a few known issues listed here in these release notes, really not too many resolved issues either. So I'm guessing a lot of the bugs that were in beta one are still here in beta two. Apple usually tends to fix up a lot of these bugs right before the public beta comes out. So I would expect a lot of bugs to be patched with the next beta, beta three, AKA public beta one. They're most likely going to be the same build. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance is already a little bit better than it was in beta one. So I did notice that my phone did heat up quite a bit here in beta two, but it's about the same as it was and beta one. So really no complaints there. It hasn't gotten better or worse, but I will say the Geekbench scores also prove that this update is a little bit better than beta one. So you can see here, I scored a 1737 and a 4772. And if we take a look back at beta one on the same device, you can see the score right there. We had a 1733 and a 4662. So a nice improvement on both single and especially on the multi-core score. But of course, as I always say, that doesn't really tell the full story, but I will say that after using beta two for a couple of hours now, two and a half hours or so, I've had a lot less crashes than I did on beta one. I've only had one crash and I had no crashes in Apple Music, which I've been listening to music for those whole two and a half hours. So it seems like the Apple Music issues may be resolved, but overall, performance is better here in beta two. Now, as far as the battery life goes, battery life, you know, it's hard to say yet if the battery life is better or worse, but I will say that just simply due to the fact that there are less, you know, issues and less crashing in general on beta two, that alone leads me to believe that the battery life will be a little bit better, slightly better than it was on beta one. Now don't expect iOS 15 type battery life. We probably won't see that until, you know, maybe even 16.1 or the RC build of iOS 16. So don't expect great battery life on beta two, but I would expect it to be a little bit better than it was in beta one. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next. So next up for iOS 16 is going to be iOS 16 developer beta three. And since we're going about two weeks in between betas, we can expect that trend to continue for beta three. So I would expect that to be on the week of July 4th. Now that is a holiday week, but Apple doesn't usually take off the entire week just because of a holiday on Monday. So I would still expect to see a developer beta three on the week of July 4th. We could see it exactly two weeks from today on the 6th, or we could even see it right there on the 7th. Really any day that week is possible aside from Monday the 4th. And then keep in mind, right once we get developer beta three, we should be seeing the public beta within a week after that. So it could be as soon as the next day, but it's most likely going to be the following week. So if we get developer beta three on the week of the 4th, we can expect to see iOS 16 public beta one on on the week of the 11th. And that public beta should have the same build number as developer beta three. It's just going to come a week later. But of course that will be the free version or the free method to getting this iOS 16 beta. That's also likely to be when iOS 16 is stable enough to be on a daily device. Now also iOS 15.6. So a lot of people have asked me about iOS 15.6 coming this week, and I think we could still see that. We could even see the RC instead of a beta four. So the fact that Apple released iOS 16 beta two before iOS 15.6 beta four leads me to believe that we might be seeing an RC instead of beta four. So we could see that as early as tomorrow, June 23rd, if you're watching this on the 22nd, or we could see the RC release next week. Now, depending on when the RC comes out, we'll determine when the final release of iOS 15.6 release it. So if we get the RC tomorrow or sometime this week, then we could expect 15.6, the final version next week. If not, we could see that also on the first week of July. It's hard to say because it all depends on when we get that RC build and we don't know if the next one is going to be an RC build or not. But of course, stay tuned. I post a lot of updates about these iOS releases over on Twitter. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 16 beta two, quite a few new changes. I will also discover more new features and changes in the software throughout the rest of this week. And I will let you guys know about those new features in the new Apple 
weekly episode coming on Saturday as usual. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the Apple weekly episode on Saturday and also continued iOS 16 coverage for the next several months. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.